Welcome to JobSkillShare.com. This is your host, Ali Ibrahim. Today we will be talking about the history of Unix. And of course, to understand Linux, we must go back and understand how Unix came into existence. The main reason behind this is that Linux shared the same concepts that of Unix. However, the open group that holds the Unix trademarks has to claim that Linux is misuse of Unix trademark. The supporter of Unix, Linux operating system do not agree to this statement. So again, why? The question is why Unix? What were the main reason that forces system makers to think about a new operating system? Well, as we all know that computer were as big as houses and even stadium back in days. They were expensive to operate. But we will really talk about here is not the size of the computer. The whole structure of this course is to focus on the system side or non-physical side. The system is what controls the hardware. So the whole focus of this course is the system or the operating system. Talking about the operating system there were many problems like operating system basically is the interface between the hardware and the application software now before unix came into existence every computer had a different operating system so like softwares were customized to serve only one computer software for one given system did not run on another system being able to work with one system did not automatically mean that you could work with another system like we did not have you know back in days we did not have any um, file sharing technology or electronic email services so there were a lot of major problems uh, you know so these were the major problems with the operating system uh, before uh, Unix. So what was the solution? Well, system maker had to come up with the solution, you know, to these problems. So in 1969, a team of developers in the Bell Lab Laboratories, or call, uh, also known as AT&T Bell in a Laboratories, started working on a solution for the software problems, like mainly to address the compatibility issues. They basically wanted an operating system that was simple, uh, written in C programming language uh, rather than or uh, instead of uh, assembly language, uh, assembly code, and being able to run on, on multiple hardware or platforms. So they develop an operating system called UNIX, which stands for Uniplex Information and Computing System and unix was actually powerful enough to handle like a hundred users at the same time like the operating system before unix was called multix which could only handle two users at a time so compared to multix unix was a big improvement well there were still many problems with unix and uh, first of all it was like written in assembly language you know that causes many obstacles and 100 user at a time was not enough for system makers so they were system makers were still were not happy with the results so what happened is in 1973 the unix code you know which was written 80% in C language and 20% in assembly language and the call this new operating system UNIX instead of UNICS which was completely written in assembly language the new operating system was based on 80% C language and 20% assembly language and it was called UNIX and uh, basically using the higher programming language C system makers were able to work much more efficiently 
in making more improvement to the operating system. So the idea behind the Unix operating system was something called kernel. It was a piece of code that needs to be adapted for every specific system. The operating systems and all other functions were built around this kernel and written in a higher programming language called C. Now using this technique, it was much easier to develop an operating system that could run on many different types of hardware. So what is kernel actually? Okay, um, kernel was the core or key component of the operating system like uh, which consists of like sub -sub subsystems like process management, uh, memory management, file management, device management, and network management. Now the major function of the kernel like are to manage like computer memory, to control access to the computer, to maintain like the file system, like like to handle like interrupt like signals to terminate an execution or to handle an error to perform like input and output services like which com allow computers to interact with terminals, storage devices and printers and to allocate the resources of the computer such as uh, the CPU and input output devices among users. So if you look at the diagram we can see that the kernel is the area outside the hardware. What it means is that it communicates with the hardware whenever we submit an instruction using the shell. The shell is the area outside the kernel. The shell reads your commands and interpret them as requests to execute program and shell is also known as like command line interface like you know beside being called command line interface shell is also a programming language which allows users to control how and when the commands are carried out so just like kernel act as a middleman or middle system between shell and hardware the shell act as an interface between the kernel and the user Um, moving on to the major features and like advantages of the new operating system Unix. Um, the first thing is the uh, Unix had multi like multi user ca capability. Um, means like more than one user can share the same system resources like hard disk, memory, printer like application software you know at the same time so another highlight of the Unix is that it is multitasking meaning that it is capable of carrying out more than one job at the same time it allows you to type a program in its editor while it simultaneously executes some other commands you know you might have given earlier say to sort and copy a huge file uh, you could run that job in the back background you know while in the foreground you could do some other activities so now it also provides programming facility like you know shell shell works like a programming language it provides like commands and keywords you know now portability one of the main reason for the universal like popularity of Unix was that it was like almost it could be ported to almost any computer system you know with a bare like you know minimum of adoption to suit a given computer architecture like again one more thing for the first time Unix provide like communication like electronic email the communication you know maybe within the network of a single main computer or between more like a 
you know different computers like from one computer to another the user can easily like exchange mail data programs you know through the network uh, you may be like a feet away or 2,000 miles like your e your mail will be delivered like you know in a matter of second now one more feature of the Unix was the security now Unix provides three level of security to protect the data the first is that it provides by assigning password like username and password for login you know to ensure that nobody can come and have access to your work at the file level there are like read write and execute permission to reach a file like which decide who can access a particular file who can modify it and who can execute it lastly there's a file encryption this utility encodes your file into an unreadable format so that even if someone succeeds in opening it your secrets are safe you know they're not going to be able to understand it because it's encrypted now the unix was an open system what it means is uh, the source code of the unix system and not just the executable code have been made available to users and programmers you know because of this many because of this like many people have been able to adapt the unix system in different ways like you know this openness has led to the introduction of wide range of new features and version like customized to meet you know spatial needs it has been easy for developer to adapt to unix because the computer code for the unix is straightforward like modular and compact now one more feature of the unix was the help facility like unix provides like manual pages for the command so uh, for example to work in unix you have to type a command if you really need to understand like you know more about that specific command you can actually use like you know the manual which was built into unix and which will help you you know understand and you know write the commands in different ways as you wish so again remember one of the most important thing is that linux is not unix you know there are two different operating system unix was created by at&t employees in 1969 and linux was written by a single man named linus Torvalds around 1991 I'll try to find an interesting video that will try to explain why Linux is not Unix. Like I said earlier, the open group that holds Unix trademark has to claim that Linux is a misuse of Unix trademark, while the supporter of the Linux do not agree to this statement. So remember, Linux is not Unix. So in the next video, uh, we will talk about uh, like how Unix is widely used as a command line interface. Of course, both Unix and Linux can have graphic user interface as well, but it's more professional and almost everywhere for security reason or for a lot of other reason, it's being used as CLI, command line interface. So we will talk about the Unix system organization like you know shell and different types and uh, we'll talk about more about the kernel and we will talk about the Unix files and directories how they are structured how they are designed I mean how they are you know um, different from like windows like file files and directories and I will try to walk through uh, one of the Linux distribution that I have access to which is Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5 and I will show you how the um, you know the files and directories work and we will get a chance to explore the graphic user interface of it and um, uh, that's it for today thank you so much and you guys have a good day